Hello, welcome to Hands On Art at Home. Are you sitting comfortably? Ready for a story? Wonderful, because we certainly are. Aren't we artists? That's our little crafty bear. This week's story is all about a little elephant searching for the perfect job. It was written by Jodie Pashini and all the wonderful pictures were created by Caroline Pedler. Are you ready? Here we go. Here she is. Here is Elsie the elephant with her mother. Well, Elsie the elephant wanted to find a job. So she went to her mum to ask for help. That's what mums are best at. Well, is there anything you enjoy doing? Mum asked kindly. Uh, Well, Elsie thought for a moment and she flapped her big elephant ears. Oh, eating, she said. Well, that's a start, said Mum. How about being a chef? Oh, so Elsie went along to Zebra's snack shack. Can you see the two of them together? They've got their chef's hats on. They've got all the equipment ready. Oh, I wonder what they're going to make. They're doing some baking, I think. Well, she tried her very best to mix and stir, just like all the other chefs. They made lumpy cupcakes. They made drizzle drinks. And gorgeous goodies. They look a lot like biscuits to me. And we can just see Elsie's trunk coming up over the edge of the table. Uh-oh. Everything looked so delicious that Elsie just couldn't help herself. She ate everything in sight. Get out! cried the other chefs. This is no job for an elephant. You don't eat all of the goodies. Poor Elsie. Elsie's mum gave her a big cuddle and said, Let's see. You're great at trumpeting. Why don't you become a musician? So Elsie joined the parakeet piccolo band. The birds were making lovely tweets and toots. You can just imagine them singing away. They're very good at doing that very loudly at the very beginning of the day when the sun comes up. So Elsie raised her trunk and gave a loud toe. Oh, too loud. This is no job for an elephant. Look, it scared them all. They're all flying away. The birds were complaining though because it was just too loud. So poor Elsie once again returned home. Oh dear, she looks very sad. Hmm, said Mum. Maybe you could use your creative skills. Oh, I do like making things. Splendid, said Mum. Maybe you'd like to be an artist. So Elsie went along to Flamingo's Pottery Studio, which is just like the hands on art studio that we have. What an excellent choice. Inside, Flamingo was spinning beautiful pots and bowls on his wheel. Can you see? We have one of those that you could come and have a go on. That would be cool. Well, that looks like lots of fun, said Elsie. And you know, she was absolutely right. Shall we take a closer look? She started shaping and patting and spinning the clay until... Uh -oh. Well, that does happen quite a lot with pottery, so it's not that big a deal. She could always have another go, except that oh, as she backed away from the potter's wheel, crash! Elsie's ears knocked over a whole shelf of dishes. Oh dear. 
This is no job for an elephant, complained Flamingo. Oh, back at home, Elsie began to cry. I eat too much and too loud and I'm clumsy. I'll never be good at anything, she wept. What nonsense, said Mum. Let's think. You're all so strong and your trunk is very powerful. And you like helping people. I'm sure that there's a job that's perfect for you somewhere. Suddenly, they heard a terrible wail. Help! From away in the distance. Whatever could be happening? That looks a lot like Zebra's Snack Shack. And it's caught on fire. <gasps> All the animals were running this way and that way and the other way and back again. They didn't know what to do. Elsie had an idea. She ran as fast as she possibly could on her little legs all the way to the watering hole. She sucked up lots and lots of water from her trunk. And she sprayed the snack shack with all the water. Elsie, you did it! All the animals cried. And Elsie had a big smile on her face. She was a firefighter and everyone agreed it was the best job for an elephant. How marvellous! We all have talents and Elsie found the best one out of her long list of talents and found just the right job. I can't think of anything better for an elephant than to be a firefighter. What do you think? What a great story. No. The story and that must mean it's time for a painting activity because we always follow our stories with a painting activity and we're definitely going to do that today so you're going to need the colors for an elephant now in the story the elephant was gray so you might have gray paint if you haven't got gray paint you could mix black and white together or you could even use a light blue instead. That would be really lovely for a baby elephant. You're going to need some paint brushes and a cloth to clean your hands because guess what? We're using our hands today. We certainly are. And after you've done that painting activity, well, it might be that you like elephants so much that you'd like to do some more. But instead of painting them, you could pop along to our studio and do click and collect of a little elephant. You could paint it with our glazes, in which case you bring it back, we'll pop it in our kiln and it'll go super shiny. Or you could decorate it with this fabulously squishy stuff that is called foam clay. Or you could make a picture of your own elephant using foam clay on a tile. I'm going to show you a little picture of one just now. There it is. You could even paint a picture of an elephant on a plate and then have your dinner off it, which is one of Elsie's favourite things, wasn't it? Food. Or you could have cakes and other goodies. But for today, we're going to do a painting on paper. So I'm going to pop a little list up on the screen to remind you of what it is that you're going to need. I'm going to give you a little minute to run off and get them all. Are you ready? Off you go. Welcome back. Do you have everything that you need for our painting activity? Fantastic. Let's get started. So uh, today's story is all about a little elephant called Elsie. So we're going to need a grey colour to paint an elephant. So you need to mix black and white together if you don't have grey paint. And you could even put a little bit of blue in there just to liven it up a bit, brighten it up. And then we're going to need to paint our hand grey. 
we need a nice big fluffy brush and put the grey colour all over our hand. There we are, popping that all the way over. There's a little bit of black in there, a little bit of white and a little bit of blue. Make a lovely, lovely grey colour. Make sure I've gone all the way over my fingers and my thumb. Now the thumb is particularly important this time. So I'm going to put my hand right in the middle of the thing. Keep my fingers quite close together. But my thumb is going to be all the way out here. All the way over. And press. Press, 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 press. Get all of that paint transferred from your hand onto the paper. There we are. And of course, because it's a grown up hand, the middle bit is missing, but we can paint that in, that's not a problem. So, and you see the elephant in that picture. Yeah. You sure? Come back on there. What if I turn it round like that? Hmm. I'm not sure. What if we put a nice big floppy elephant ear on there? So I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to use black. Black's boring. I'm going to use blue for my elephant ear. Here we are. So a lovely and big, and they go around. A lovely flippity floppy elephant ear. A bit more paint to make sure it shows up. There's the ear of the elephant. So this is the trunk. The trunks are very, very, very long. So you can you make a long trunk? You can wave it all around. So what we could do is where the trunk twists and turns, we could put some little bend marks. So we could just put a couple of little marks on there, like that. Or we could do the same where the knees are, so we've got the different joins in the knee. And what else do elephants have that make them distinctive from everything else? Well, they have a tusk. So I'm going to mix a little bit of, of yellow with my white so that it'll show up because otherwise white doesn't show up on, on white paper. So I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow in with my white paint so that I can paint the tusk on here. And In there. And she needs an eye to be able to see where she's going. Because she's a firefighter and she's going to the rescue. So she needs an eye to see here. Yeah. We'll let that dry before we put the pupils in. That's the dark bit in the middle. Now then. The secret ingredient for Elsie's favourite, favourite job as a firefighter is water, isn't it? Let's have a quick look at the cover of the book. Look at all that water that she's spraying out of her trunk. I think we need to paint a lovely big splash on here. I'm going to need my brush with my paint, my blue paint again. And the way we do it is thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up. Put those up more. It carries on right over her body. <gasps> wow! Look at all of that water. And of course, if it's all spraying up into the air like that, well, anything that goes up must come down. So I would imagine there would be puddles all over the floor.
love and peace. It's gone everywhere. And also, if it's spraying, then there would be lots and lots of little droplets. So if we use our little finger, we could put lots and lots of little droplets everywhere. All the way out. Oh, goodness. Everywhere there is water. But of course, if you're going to put out a fire, then you're going to need lots and lots of water, aren't you? You know what I've just remembered that elephants have? That we don't have. They have a little tail. Yes, they do. So let's pop her little tail on there. We need to dip the brush back into the grey paint. And give her a little tail. And maybe a black tail. There we are. And then we just need to pop the black in the middle of the eye. And there is our hand-trimmed elephant. I would love to see the pictures of your hand-trimmed elephants. Maybe you could do a whole chain of them, because your hands are smaller than mine. So you could do a chain of elephants all going along together. When what they do is they hold each other's tail with their trunk. If you could show them uh, to me on our Facebook page, or maybe you could get your parents to email them to me, that would be great. Here's a little reminder of our of those addresses. Well, I do hope you'll join me again for another story very, very soon. You look after yourselves. Bye bye now.